All right. This is Matthew Centrowitz from the Men's 1500. Um, I'll be asking questions on behalf of the media today. Could you just start off by walking us through the race? Yeah. Um, crazy, crazy race. Uh, you know, stacked all the way through. Um, I mean, we, we had everyone in there that all the big names from this year. And uh, I think you can you can kind of feel the excitement just on the starting line um, when they're announcing every every single individual on there. So uh, one of the most exciting races I've been a part of, especially domestically. Um, you know, I didn't know what to expect going into this race. I didn't know if it was going to be fast. It was going to be slow. Um, you know, I just tried to have all these different type of race plans, uh, but all consisted of me just having a, a presence in the front. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of went the way I wanted to go. I had pole position going to the last lap. Um, I've been joking around all, uh, all victory lap and, or again, not victory lap, I guess second place lap, but uh, the, just with people about the, the screens, you know, we're used to having a, a screen on the back stretch and on the, on the home stretch. And it, it was hard to kind of gauge where everyone was. And so I glanced back with like maybe 150, 120 to go. And I saw I had a little bit of a gap and I, instead of trying to save a little something extra for that last 50, I just kind of punched it. And uh, sure enough, you know, uh, Cole had another gear that I couldn't respond to, but um, all in all, you know, I, I'm very happy with it. Um, Cole's an exceptional individual um, and uh, having the goose um, also on that team, I think is going to be really exciting for this 1500 squad going to Tokyo. Thank you. We have a question here from Jonathan Galt. What did you say to Cole in the semifinals? And what <laughs> were you thinking after you crossed the line today? So, uh, I don't know if Jonathan was in the stadium, but, uh, I took the mic before they even asked me a question when we were, uh, all three of us were together talking to the crowd. And I addressed that, um, before, because I said that was the most popular question I've gotten all year, obviously. Um, truth be told, I don't remember because it was in the heat of the moment. Um, I believe, I think I turned and just made a joke about like, Hey, we, we got, you know, we had this, this heat wrapped up, like no need to press, maybe something like that. I mean, it was really quick. So obviously it wasn't exactly what I just said, but it's something along those lines. Um, I wish I could tell you there's some shit talking. I wish I could tell you, I said, you're moved back to him, but that's not the case. Um, we both jogged off the track and then we were in the tunnel together, me and Cole, just pretty much giving stroking each other. We were just like giving each other kudos. You know, I think Cole mentioned, uh, it's been an honor, um, racing these last couple of days. And I just told him, I, Hey, I have the utmost respect for you. Um, what you've accomplished this, this past year, um, not just being a former duck, but just a, a fan of the sport and, and seeing what, um, the Oregon team has done, uh, this past year has been, been exciting, um, obviously for a fan, but for, for someone who's a competitor of theirs, it's just like elevated our game. And, uh, I'm not saying the 15 has been boring this past decade, but uh, this year has been super exciting and, and definitely motivated me um, throughout the year to, to make sure I get my shit together and bring my A game this, this uh, championship. Yeah. Uh, continuing to talk about the semifinals right before you and Cole crossed the line, you both looked at each other and smiled. What was going through your head at that moment? Did I just not answer that question? <laughs> I mean, what were you thinking? Um, I mean, it was probably, we're just probably smiling from what, what I just said, uh, what I had said in the race. I don't remember what it was. Um, I don't know, man, you'd have to ask some of these guys, but for me, like trials are, trials are, um, nerve wracking, you know, in many ways, they're more nerve wracking than the Olympics itself. Um, you know, for me, every time you qualify, uh, for the next round, whether it's the first round, the second round, or you, you make the team, it's like, whew, like it, it's a, it's a relief, you know, you're just like, okay, like so much crap can go on in these trials as we've seen, you know, um, we had post, we had the, the race postponed six hours. Um, people are falling petitions. And, uh, I, I mean, it, it's hard not to smile when, you know, you go around. Um, I just, I felt really good. I know he felt really good. We had fun with it. Um, if people are, I've stayed off social media, I've stayed off of the internet this whole week, obviously for many good reasons. But if, uh, if, you know, we're getting trash talk for that, I mean, it's fun, man. We're just having, we're just having a good time out there. Cole and I, uh, there, there's no hard feelings between, uh, him and I, um, I think we both were just enjoying the moment, enjoying racing each other. It, it's exciting. This is what you train for. Um, my family was right at that, that by the tunnel. So, you know, I just kind of gave him a wave, let him know that everything was good to go. And, and on to the next round, I got a lot of my family and friends just excited to, to watch the final after that 70. So, um, we're having fun with it. You know, there, there's no bad blood between me and Cole. Um, I respect, the crap out of that guy. Uh, he's a fierce competitor. I knew he was going to be the top guy today. That was going to give me a hard time. And, um, we, I hope we put on a show and we didn't let, let down. So we have a follow-up question from Ashley Coleman from focus media. Your family was there to support. How important was it for you to have them physically there to witness this accomplishment? Oh man. 
I don't know if I wanted to say this because it doesn't really matter, but um, I, I just had uh, this race going into it. I was like struggling. I was like, I was like super nervous. I felt like my heart rate was up. I felt like I was just a lot of anxiety. Um, you know, I had, I taken, I had taken, drank some coffee earlier to get ready for the, for the final. And then we're about to go warm up and they're like, Hey, you got six hours until your actual race. So trying to come down from something like that is not easy. And then having a gear back up for it. Um, I, str- I'm not gonna lie. I, str- I struggled with that for the last several hours. And, uh, the point of this speech of mine right now is that having my family in the crowd and seeing them when I approach the line, hearing like my sister on the starting line, I mean, they're, they're right there at the 1500 start, um, gave me a little sense of, uh, you know, comfort and, uh, just kind of what I needed to hear and see, uh, to kind of calm my nerves a little bit. So, um, you know, obviously with Tokyo this year, I don't think anyone's going to be able to go over there and watch us. So this was really special for them to kind of, um, be here and, and at least get some kind of, um, uh, you know, watch me race at least for a little bit of this year because it's, it's not been a, an easy road. So I'm happy I was able to kind of put on a, a, a good show and, and kind of come through and, and uh, give them something to cheer about. Yeah, thank you. Um, a question from Jonathan Galt. Did you get any flashbacks to 2011 when you beat Legat with Cole beating you as a collegian today? Uh, I didn't get any flashbacks, no. Um, I, I actually, it's funny that you mentioned that, that race, Jonathan, because uh, kind of approaching this race. That's how I wanted to race it. I wanted to kind of save something for that last 50. And, and that's where I kind of made my tactical error on, on punching a little too soon because I saw that gap I had. Um, but certainly Cole, um, I guess, I don't know if he did what I did to the gap cause he came from behind me, but, um, you know, with the youth in the, in the age thing, certainly I can see some comparisons there. Um, I like to just say for the record, by the way, um, when I beat a 20 year old and I'm 31, you know, everyone's like, Oh, you must feel real good about that. When I beat Legat when I was 20 and he was over 30, everyone's like, wow, look at Legat. He's so old and he's still showing out for these kids. And then I get crap when I beat them and everyone's like, wow, you must feel real good. You're 10 years older than them. I, I can't win. I can't win. Um, at the end of the day, um, I said this, a handful of times writing this interview. Um, I respect Cole. I respect all these guys. I think it's great for the event. I think it's great for the sport. Um, you know, as long as my competitors know, I have respect for them. And, and, uh, that's all that matters. I, I think everyone on, on the social media stuff and forums and whatnot want to speculate and start stuff. And, and that's fine. That, that, you know, gives them something to talk about, but, um, it's competition, man. I don't care if there's a, you know, Hobbs Kessler, if there's a 12 year old out there that's running 334. We're, we're competitors. You know what I mean? It's great that, that you have all different ages, uh, competing with each other, thirties, twenties, and the teens. Um, I think it makes it exciting, but, I don't think it makes it like any difference on like you should be beating them because you're 10 years older or 10 years younger. You know what I mean? We're, we're all fierce competitors. And I think it's just awesome that you have all these guys from different generations and, and uh, decades competing against each other. Um, but uh, I'm just happy not to move up to the 5k just yet. Uh, so we'll see. Sorry okay. for these long winded answers, by the way, I skipped, I skipped media all week. No, I'm sure the media is really appreciating it. Yeah, yeah. We have a question from Chris Hansen. Was there any point in the last couple of years where you didn't think this moment was possible? In the last couple of years, I think this, no, I mean, all right. Since I'm just, since I'm just spewing tonight, I'm just gonna spew again. When people are talking about like, you've had a rough go the last few years. I mean, Last few years, 2017, I got second. I won in 2018, and I got second in 2019. I don't know why everyone's talking about these rough years. If if a rough year is finishing second, then okay, I've had some rough years. I mean, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, I've run 331 in 2018. Um, no, wh- what what year besides last year when it was COVID and no one was really racing did I ever have a terrible year that didn't make me think I was going to make the Olympics? I mean, I haven't finished outside top two in the last decade. So. I'm going to be blunt. And I'm going to answer that question. I hope, I hope it doesn't come off arrogant, but I'm just being honest. Like I have not felt in the last few years that I couldn't make this team. Um, did I, I ran 150 and 340 early this season? Yeah. I'm starting out. Like I know where my fitness is at. I know what I'm peaking for. Um, were guys running 350 in the mile in January. Yeah. Um, you know, it doesn't change the thing. I'm like where I need to be at during that time, you know? Um, so, you know, I, I was, I ran, 1332 Cole and I had a great duel back in December. Um, I knew, I knew where my fitness was and I, and I knew where I need to get to. Uh, I've been doing this for so long now that, um, you know, confidence is something I definitely don't lack. Uh, we have a question here from Doug Binder. How impressed are you with Cole's ability to switch gears and kick like that? I mean, super impressed. I mean, the guy, 
the guy's been, I, I don't know. I'm impressed with everything. I'm impressed that he's able to do that. I'm impressed that he's been able to do that since January. Um, and he's not, he's showing no signs of letting up. I mean, the guy's just an absolute animal. Um, I, I think it's just, a, I think it's just his personality. He probably just steps the line. He doesn't care if he's racing the world record holder or, um, you know, uh, he's at a dual meet racing, a, a fellow teammate of his, he's, he's going to go out there and, and, uh, you know, compete and, and, uh, you know, give a, give a great effort. Um, I don't, I don't know if he's ever had a bad race this year that I've seen. I, I don't, you know, they've been racing almost every single weekend. So I'm just impressed with everything. I'm impressed with, um, the longevity, him able to do it week in and week out and, uh, the doubles he was able to do. So coming into this man, I, I knew he was definitely the top dog, um, that I had my eye on and, and a guy that I was, um, uh, you know, if, if I felt like I was going to lose, I, f- I felt very confident that I could win and I came really close to it, but I knew that the guy that was going to give you the most problems was going to be cool. We have another question from Jonathan Galt here. Matthew, what are your thoughts on the Shelby Houlihan situation and do you believe and support her? Oh man. Um, I don't know where to start with that. Um, I mean, I guess the best place to start with that is absolutely. I support her. Um, I believe her. Um, and you know, I don't, I don't think it's a, um, a complete, um, secret that her and I didn't have a a relationship in the past. So I I know her really well. Um, I know the, the type of athlete, the type of individual she is, um, this case, uh, her, her situation hits really close to home, probably more than anyone else on the team because of, because of our, our past relationship and, um, me knowing about this case really well, uh, truth be told, um, I could have been in, in, in the position that she was in, uh, the burrito truck that she ate at, um, was a place that I ate every single time with her. Uh, you know, we, her and I would always get the same carne asada burrito. And, uh, the one time that she didn't, she was going over and watched, uh, you know, uh, the bachelorette with the girls and I ate dinner with a teammate and, uh, we both got tested the next morning. And, and that was, that was the test that they found the contaminated meat and, uh, um, when, when people ask about, you know, teammates or about other athletes, about whether they're clean or dirty or whatever, most of the time, you know, you could be like, I feel comfortable, confident or comfortable uh, speaking that I believe that person or don't believe that person. But at the end of the day, none of us really go home with, with those type of people or with, with some of those teammates, you know, you don't live with them. But with Shelby, I was there 24-7. I, I, I know what she was putting in her body. I know that um, – the vitamins that she was taking, I know, I know, um, I, I would have seen it because I, I was there literally 24 seven with her. Um, it's, it's an absolute, um, it, it's probably one of the saddest things I think, uh, that I had to witness in the sport, um, that I've been a part of the sport for the last decade plus, um, because it, it's an innocent athlete that has to, um, serve a four-year ban from the sport that she put everything into that she trusted, um, and I mean, I stand behind her. I stand behind all my teammates' um, support and words. Um, unfortunately, I don't write as well as Chris Derrick and, and everyone on my team. And, and it was hard to put in words on how this situation made me feel. Um, but there is no doubt in my mind that she is clean and that she's serving a ban for something that she, did, she shouldn't be um, uh, guilty of. Thank you. We have a couple questions from Larry Etter from Run Blog Run. Uh, Matthew, you learn quickly. Will you learn from the tactic used on you today? I mean, I mean, yeah, I made I made a mistake, but what, I, taking it to Tokyo is is going to be hard. It, it, you know, the thing the thing about it is like you know, I these decisions you make, especially in the last 150 100 meters, they're split decisions. You don't have time to really take a few steps and think about it or a few seconds. Um, I, I'm going to live with the decision I made. I mean, looking back now, I think I should have saved a little bit more clearly. And I, and I think I would give myself a little bit better shot. Who knows? Maybe not, but uh, going to Tokyo. No, I mean, this is, this is something that um, I'm, it's only going to make me better. And uh, you know, we're Colby, definitely another guy I'm going to compete against in Tokyo. But um, I think the move that I made being in the front, obviously put me in a vulnerable spot, exposed me and it was harder um, holding those guys off. And I think it's just gonna make me better. So um, yeah, I, I mean, I obviously know what I mis- made a mistake on, but moving forward from it, I don't know how I'd correct that in, in a different different situation moving forward, like in Tokyo, so. And then another question from Larry Etter. What did Jerry say to you prior to the race? <laughs> Jerry just has a lot of confidence in me. Um, 
I, I, I've had a good relationship with Jerry for years, uh, living, living in Beaverton um, and crossing paths with him for over a decade. I think he's, he's got so much uh, confidence in my ability and it, it shows and it makes me feel confident in myself. And he was just like, you know, go out and do what you do. Um, <clears throat> we, we spoke uh, quite a bit yesterday about different strategies, but it all came down to just ext- establishing a presence in the front. I knew I was um, one of the better athletes in the field and I didn't want to put myself in the back with the riffraff. And, uh, so I just got myself in the position I wanted to early on and, and just kind of, um, yeah, just kind of controlled the pace and, uh, uh, allowed myself the best, uh, sorry, I'm just kind of blanking out, allowed myself the, the best position to make the team. And that's from the front. And, uh, you know, I, I could have won, I could have ran that race in many different ways, you know, fast, uh, from the start, I could have, um, slow and tactical like the semis and I guess a sort of I felt kind of slow even though we did run 335 um but there's many ways I could I could win it I felt really confident in my ability with my speed and my strength we've been working on all that stuff change of pace this year so um I was very well prepared coming in here not many setbacks um this past year and uh, I was ready to go so well thank you for so much for your time and congratulations that's all the questions we have from the media right now all right thanks guys